look a little bit like a marshmallow today, but it's supposed to rain. I wasn't gonna vlog today, I was gonna vlog tomorrow. But I'm like, you know what, doing errands and not vlogging just doesn't, they're not the same. I picked up this one. She is an ivy green Hedera. And then I also picked up this one. I think this is called a Euphorbia. I could be wrong, but she is a gorgeous little plant. I'm back home. I'm about to eat my sushi that I got from Amazon Fresh. I'm actually obsessed with this thing. It's so good. I feel like in my vlogs, I'm always like going somewhere to buy something. I'm always like, let's go here. I'm gonna buy this or I'm gonna get this or I'm doing this errand, buying this, getting this. But right now, got my laptop, got my sushi and I'm gonna pay my bills. I'm gonna do my car payment, my insurance payment, my phone payment. So yeah, we are paying our bills this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Also tomorrow, I think I'm gonna make a really quick trip to Barnes and Noble and I'm gonna pick up Happy Place by Emily Henry and what is it called? And the one, what is that one called? Meet Me by the Lake, I think it's called, by, by Carly Fortune. If you don't know about that one, she is the author that wrote Every Summer After, which is literally one of my favorite reads from last year and she just, <gasps> have a pimple, okay. But yeah, she wrote Every Summer After and she just released a new book called Meet Me by the Lake and I'm so excited. Also, I was thinking of making like a little segment in my vlogs where I share with you guys thoughts on a book that I just read or a book that I really enjoyed because I feel like I don't make enough book recommendation videos to be talking about every single book I'm reading because I finished my year of rest and relaxation last week and I need to rave about that book. Like I know I say that about every single book. I'm like, it's so good, I loved it. But this book, especially after a week of reading it and I'm like still thinking about it, it was really good. I'm officially banning myself from coming to Barnes and Noble for like two months. I literally came just to browse and maybe pick up one or two of the new releases only to walk out with four books. And I'm not even regretful. Honestly, the one book that I'm the most excited about is this one right here. I got Meet Me, what is it? Meet Me at the Lake. I don't have a single clue what it's about. All I know is it's at a lake and it's Carly Fortune. Also this cover, has to be one of my favorite covers. I also picked up Happy Place. I already know this one's gonna be amazing. There's no doubt in my mind that I'm gonna love it. These books are gonna transport me to the most magical summer place ever. And then what I should have done is gotten those two books, paid for them and went on my merry way, but I didn't do that and I kept browsing. And of course I found two other books that I just had to have. I don't know why I'm like this. I was literally gonna go to Sephora too, just to browse. I'm not going anymore because I just, I don't know what browsing is. Every single time that I've been to Barnes and Noble in the past like three or four months, I kept seeing this book every single time without fail. I would pick it up. I would read a little bit of it and it would always sound intriguing, but I would never buy it. I was like, you know what? Enough of the indecisiveness. I'm just gonna get it. So what I gathered is that it's 
it's basically about these three women that are all going through like their different struggles and are all just living separate lives but out of the blue somebody leaves a baby in their bassinet on one of these women's doorsteps and basically this baby brings these very very different women together it's basically a book about friendship but it is funny and witty and entertaining when i picked up the sweet spot i was like you know what i'm already not sticking with the number of books i told myself i was gonna get so what's one more book and i knew that this book i was going to end up reading anyway but yeah this is yours truly i'm not gonna lie this was a really really successful bookstore trip so last night i was watching one of michelle Choi's vlogs she's literally one of my favorite people on the internet and she made this meal for herself and i don't know if it's the way that she eats or something but it looks so freaking good it's basically a korean dish and last night i made a whole list for myself of everything that i need to recreate it because it looked that good so i'm stopping at a grocery store that has like authentic um asian products and hopefully they have everything i need it's also not a complicated meal at all but knowing me, I would find a way to make it complicated. actually made two separate dishes dishes is a strong word like dishes makes it sound like <laughs> this is good this might sound a little gross to some of you guys but i tried it the other day and it was actually really good it's spicy ramen with cucumber on the side and then i tried making what i told you guys i was gonna make it's literally just rice and veggies and sesame oil and that chili paste but it's pretty good i couldn't find the meat or like the beef that goes with this and i'm pretty sure that's a big part of it so it's still good though i'm gonna eat this and watch a show i need you guys to tell me if you relate to this or not but do you guys have a show that you were like absolutely obsessed with or maybe it's like multiple shows that you were obsessed with growing up like a disney show a pbs show whatever it is that you still re-watch even now that you're older because i've seen the netflix shows i've seen all my reruns of all my favorite shows and sometimes you just want to watch something light and nostalgic and short and sweet
last week I finished my year of rest and relaxation and yesterday or the day before I finished The Maid. So for the last segment of this vlog, I thought I would talk about these books. Starting with this absolute masterpiece right here, which is my year of rest and relaxation. Before reading it, I knew it was going to be good and I knew it was going to be different and the whole thing, but I really, really, really was not expecting to love it as much as I do. Let me just tell you what this book is about and like the gist of this book because the overall plot of this book is so weird, but it's what makes it so good because I was literally like questioning myself. I was like, what am I actually reading right now? And most importantly, why am I actually enjoying it? It's basically about like a 27, 28 year old girl that lives in New York. She's an orphan. Both of her parents died like a few years ago and she inherited all of their money. So she has like all of this money. So she is like incredibly depressed. She's really lonely. She's struggling with friendships, with relationships. And that is where she makes a decision that she basically wants to fall asleep and be asleep for an entire year. She's going to be taking all of these pills. Like literally she takes like 20 pills or more a day and she thinks that after this whole year she's gonna wake up with like a new mindset a new purpose she pretty much thinks that her love for life will come back after this whole year of pretty much being asleep the whole time it's honestly such a straightforward story like you're literally reading about this girl that's going in and out of sleep but this book shows you the struggles with her friendships with her relationships the relationship that she has with herself it shows you the trauma that she went through with her parents the ending of this story i literally gasped out loud the ending in itself just made this book five stars out of five it was so incredibly good this one i feel like i don't have as much to say other than i really enjoyed myself while reading it it was a really nice reading experience and i will say that as soon as i got to the halfway point of this book i was reading it like this but the first half of the book went really slow for me because it is like a whodunit and it is like somebody died and you're trying to figure out who was the one that killed that person but i feel like the first half wasn't really like suspenseful until the halfway point i was just like i need to know this like it was so good it's about molly the maid she is a maid at this really really fancy hotel that a lot of like powerful people go to basically a super super powerful man was murdered in the hotel room that molly was in charge of cleaning and she was the one that found him she becomes a suspect in this murder it honestly just feels like you're watching like a whodunit type of movie in your head because you're getting to know every single character every person in the hotel and how each person is connected to the murder so honestly i was super super entertained with this book i love the ending so yeah this was a good one i gave this one four stars out of five but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this vlog i love you guys and i'll see you guys in my next one bye